a champion will be crowned tonight in Cary, North Carolina, as for the 11th time, the NCAA Women's College Cup is played here. Down to one final match between two unbeaten teams, Florida State and Stanford. And for the Stanford Cardinal, perhaps a little extra good luck charm for goalkeeper Ryan Campbell. For more on that, let's bring in Marion Crowder. Well, Jen, players were asked to bring props to the photo shoot they had on Thursday, and Ryan Campbell chose to bring a piece of Kagan with her as a tribute to how well they have played at home this season. She actually sprinkled it onto the pitch here at Wake Med Park before that BYU semifinal. And I asked her, and she said, it's all in humorous spirit. But with the stakes being so high, it is nice to have a piece of home with us. And Jen, Laurie, I'd say that's translated so far with the shutout of one of the nation's most high-powered offenses. Yeah, I, I like it. Whatever it takes to help get you there, here is the starting lineup, Lori, for Stanford. Yeah, and unchanged from their semifinal game. This is a team that's been excellent defensively. Wesley has been a big part of that. She's their leader, their stalwart. But this is a possession-based team, so look no further than Dom's in the midfield. She'll dictate a tempo, picking and choosing when to go quickly, when to slow things down. A lot of youth for this Stanford team. A little different story for Florida State, a very experienced group out there for Brian Penske. Yeah, and they're unchanged as well, no surprise. We talk about their front five, expecting the push to pace, send players forward. But in these situations, it's all about Taylor Huff being that two-way midfielder, providing balance and getting forward. Two unbeaten teams facing off in the national championship. So we invite you to love the game with us from Cary, North Carolina, Florida State in white, Stanford in black, as we get this one going from Wake Med Soccer Park. Never before has this match featured two teams coming in with unbeaten records, but that's what we have with these two programs, both in search of their fourth national championship. Ron EY, really instrumental along that back line. Gilchrist, Flynn, the two center backs for the Seminoles. Watch these two center backs and how they start to dictate when this Florida State team goes. That's something Brian Penske, head coach of Florida State, talked to us about yesterday. Well, and also watch their positioning behind the ball because that's going to be key because you can already see for this Florida State team and that's going to be a difference for them defensively than what Stanford faced against BYU in their semifinal matches. This team is much more expansive when they do build. That does leave themselves exposed defensively when the ball is turned over. How does Stanford deal with that when they win the ball in the midfield? Can they go quickly? Deanna Olsen going quickly now for Florida State. Seminoles turn it over, and you expect we will see a bit more attack out of Stanford than they had to generate in that semifinal. They scored two goals in the first four minutes of the match, the two fastest goals they've scored all season. And then really, it was just about defending the rest of the way. Dudley, first team All-American out to another freshman, Nimi Van Zanten. Those two such big parts of this veteran Florida State team. There's Etchegini, number six, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. She and Dudley, both first team All-Americans. Herman Trophy semifinalist for the Seminoles. Jody Brown, Jamaican International, striding onto the ball. It'll slip in the end though. And it heads out of bounds. Well, yeah, just the execution for Brown wasn't there. But those runs for Huff and Brown out of the midfield for Florida State are going to be on all game long. And it's going to be so important for Harvey in that holding midfield position for Stanford to make sure that she's communicating, tracking those runners. Could be the difference tonight. Leilani Nesbitt, key piece in the midfield for Florida State. She loses it here, though. And here comes Stanford on the attack. And they hit the Seminoles in transition. Good recovery. Seminoles snuff out the initial attempt, but Stanford still in possession. There's two defenders in the center of that defense you mentioned earlier. Kennedy Wesley, Elise Evans. Well, 
Jen, you mentioned that you expect the Stanford team to attack a bit more than we saw in their semifinal match, but I also expect them to keep a bit more possession. This is a possession-based team. We didn't see that against BYU. Had to drop deep after scoring those two go-ahead goals in the opening minutes of the game. But these positionings right here from Doms, she's the one that's going to direct the traffic, lead this team into the attack. A lot of space for Doms right there to put this ball off to the side. Montoya had one of those early goals for Stanford on Friday, and now the Cardinal will get the first corner kick of the match. Paul Ratcliffe in his 21st season as Stanford head coach, three-time National Coach of the Year, three NCAA championships, and told us this is one of the most unified teams he's had. Really good spirit to this group. Will that translate into success on this national championship stage? Montoya, some space in the box for a shot that glances off wow. the crossbar. Yep, and it's a great start from Stanford. Finding Doms initially, it's that attack that leads to this corner kick. They opt to go short, and then they have numbers to build. And this is a bit slow defensively for Florida State to get pressure on that shot from Ike. Sends that one just over the bar in the end, but almost identical looking for the placement of those first two goals in the semifinal for Stanford. Great opportunity early on. As you can see, that just skies right over Roque's right hand. Jasmine Ike, 11 goals, 11 assists on a first-team All-American campaign for the sophomore from Stanford. She, too, a Herman yeah, Trophy yeah, semifinalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah those two Florida State players I mentioned. Evan so composed there in the back. Ball stepped in and won from Gilchrist. Florida State faced Clemson in their semifinal match. That was also a two nothing victory for the Seminoles. Took a little longer though to get on the board in that one. One goal in the first half in the 38th minute off the bench from Caitlin Zippe. And then Jordan Dudley putting it away in the 53rd. And here is Dudley, so hard to contain. Takes a couple of defenders to do it. Ezzagini couldn't keep it in bounds. And you just cannot give enough credit to Brian Penske and what he has done. His second season at Florida State, coming over from the University of Tennessee, taking over for an absolute legend, Mark McCorian, who really built this Florida State program into what it is with those three NCAA championships. And the Seminoles come in here, their fourth straight College Cup. They've won the last four ACC tournament titles. They're unbeaten and looking for one more win. Echigini into the box. To sneak it through toward the near post it was touched so now Florida State will get a shot from the corner. Well it's good positioning from Wesley because she knows she's beaten but then you have coverage right there from Wesley just goes to ground and the last Number second eight. sends that one out for a corner kick and this is an area where Florida State can be dangerous with their height of Dudley at Chagini at times. It's going to be all about the service and the defending for Stanford on these set pieces. Ronnie Wyatt with the ball toward the near post. Nesbeth fighting her way toward it. It is out off of Stanford. Will this Stanford defense be tested by the number one offense in Florida State tonight? Good ball across. It is headed away initially. Shea Harvey got to it for Stanford. Five times these two teams have met all of those meetings coming in the NCAA tournament. Stanford, three wins in those five meetings. Florida State with two, which includes, as I mentioned earlier, in 2018, right here in Cary. In the semifinal, Florida State winning that one 2 nothing. They also met in the 2014 National Championship game. 
for the state roundup winner. Florida State National Championships in 2014, 2018, 2021 for Stanford. The three titles coming in 2011, 2017, 2019. Just about guaranteed to have one of these two shades of red, Garnet or Cardinal, playing for a national title. At least it's been that way over the last few years. EY. Same situation in front of her. Judy Brown took some contact. She does go down. A whistle is blown by our referee, Megan Mullen. And it's a second opportunity for Brown that she's been taken down almost in that exact same spot, making a run out initially in the opening minutes. This time trying to come over, help out to see if she can create a little one-two. And these are the areas we've already seen a bit of a methodical approach, the way that Florida State wants to build happy just to pass the ball back and forth through their center backs. But at times, once they do go get the ball out wide, can they go quickly? Because this is what Stanford wants to do, is make the game predictable for themselves. They'll have initial pressure and then coverage. This one ultimately results in this free kick for Florida State and see if they can be dangerous with their service. EY floated into the area, punched away by Campbell. She took some contact and was fouled. Well, it's a good ball in, there's good pace, there's enough bodies around the ball, making it difficult for Campbell, but that's exactly what you want from your goalkeeper. Demanding, coming out, getting a few steps to be able to provide a little momentum for herself, punch that away and then the, the foul and the, the free kick. Turnover, back to the Seminoles it goes. Olsen puts it up in front of the goal and it's in the gloves of Campbell. Stanford will want to build out of the back. Two of these Stanford players were a part of that last national championship team in 2019, Maya Doms and Kennedy Wesley. Last time Stanford played in the College Cup, they won it all in 2019. Florida State has had a little bit of both here in their last few visits. They've won on penalty kicks and they've lost in penalty kicks in the final and back-to-back -back years. But a lot of experience. Six players in this starting lineup for Florida State have won a national championship, eight on the team. As I mentioned earlier, they are a much more veteran group. A lot of youth, seven underclassmen starting for Stanford in this national championship match. Well, and that's going to be the experience, and that's why Florida State has to push the pace, use that experience to their advantage. And much like we've seen these last 10 minutes or so, pin Stanford in defensively as much as possible, get numbers forward, make them feel uncomfortable. But then the spacing, the composure inside the 18-yard box is going to be the difference for this Florida State team. Look at that ball into space from Dudley EY. Gets onto it perfectly. Taylor Hoff trying to make her way to it at the top of the box. That ball that we just saw is exactly what they've been asking for their players to do. They know with the way that they're going to have to press this Stanford team, it's going to make their shape a little bit more narrow than normal. So if they can find that quick outlet, they will continue to generate opportunities in the final third. 13 assists on the season. Marion for Taylor Huff, who's standing over it at the corner now for Florida State. Has assisted off of corner kicks already this season, bending it toward the goal. Assist might try to take one herself. A little low, though, handled <laughs> easily in the end by Campbell. Yeah, just going back to Marion's point, though, about switching the tack, is we are going to see that ball played in from Huff. And I think they have to do a bit better job. That's the third time that Campbell's come out on set pieces, able to snag it directly off of the service. Pull it a bit away, give your your teammates an opportunity to get on the end of it. But just going back to Marion's point, switching the play because this is a Stanford team that is not only compact horizontally, but they're compact vertically as well. So switching the ball, finding EY, Olsen on that far side at times could be the difference and the ability to unleash and unlock that compact defense for Stanford. No easy task, but this Florida State team is proven to be patient. They have grown in both 
confidence and belief as this season has gone on. As Brian Penske told us yesterday, this team absolutely did not believe. And remember, their ACC season got off to kind of a rough start. They conceded three goals, I believe, in their first Rough couple and of close, ACC. Though. They're well, undefeated. <laughs> they, they are undefeated, yes. But they they were leaking goals a little bit there for a while. From their standards, for sure. And that's one of the areas that they feel like they have cleaned up. Brian Pinsky and his team defensively has been much more stingy. You're just going to see Echigini break free. Echigini couldn't keep it. By the way, it was seven goals against in the first three ACC games. And when you consider this is a team in this NCAA tournament that has yet to concede, it tells you a little bit that defense really picked things up as this season went along. As much as we talk about their offense, defense pretty impressive well, too. Well, Pinsky also did say that he feels like their back line is playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. The accolades go to the front five and rightfully so what they've done in the attack all season long. But the back four not getting a ton of praise, especially without considering the goal that you mentioned, Jen, in this tournament, how good they have been. See if they can keep another clean sheet here tonight against Stanford. If I was a coach, I'd be all over that. I'd just be rubbing it in, telling them people are loving on the offense a little more, anything to fire up your defenders, whatever works. Gilchrist. Lovely assist on one of the goals in the semifinal against Clemson. EY. Lauren Flynn. To Nesbitt, native of Bermuda. A lot of international flavor on this Florida State team, per usual. And great work defensively, and this is what's going to be needed from Florida State because we're already seeing how patient they're trying to be. But once they get runners, whether it's Olsen or EY going forward, they have the posi positioning and shape behind the ball to win it back immediately and not allow Stanford to get out and go forward quickly. Dom's one of the more competitive players that Paul Ratcliffe says he has ever coached. Jody Brown taps it out for Dudley. Dudley somehow finds it through for Huff. Look at all the numbers for Stanford. The space so hard to find to claim if you're Florida State. No shots for the Seminoles yet. Huff maybe get one here from Dudley. Well, and that gives us a little glimpse of why Huff has been such an addition to this Florida State midfielder. Had runners going forward that she could just flip the ball through. Instead, gets her head up, finds Jordan Dudley isolated 1v1, tries to take it off her chest, and then that's when the support, the extra numbers for Stanford defensively converge on her. But it's the right idea, and that's the patience that we're going to have to see from Florida State. They're going to have to be committed to getting and utilizing the width throughout this game. Stanford on the ball now to Ali Montoya. The goal in the second minute of the semifinal. Fastest of the season. She sends it across. Ready and waiting to pick up the ball, lifts her head, sees Dudley, wants to send her one on one. A little too much. Yeah, but it's the right idea because you could say that she forces the issue, Olsen, to try to find Dudley. But I think even if that ball doesn't come off, it loosens that back line up a little bit for Stanford and just gives them an understanding of, hey, if that ball is turned over and we can go quickly, why not play Dudley in? Because the next time you can play her to feet or you can find Echigini or Brown underneath as well. Probably those type of moments that both teams will be looking for as needed as they present themselves. Florida State leading the nation in scoring offense this season. 
They've scored 70 goals. That is the second most in program history. BYU's goal total was a little bit higher than Florida State's coming into this college cup, but they, the Cougars played more games, average scoring in favor of this Seminole team. Dudley, a big part of that in her freshman year. Stanford clears it out nicely for a throw in rather than a corner kick. Well, it's a good passage of play because you suck in the right back of Stanford and then you get Dudley running into that space, getting her 1v1 and Wesley's been excellent so far. The initial pressure on Dudley, not allowing her time and space once she does collect the ball. Catagini, Olsen off the post. An acrobatic volley for Bianca Olsen that doesn't miss by much. Well, I thought maybe she was going to take it with her head. Does so well, and Olsen is going to be crucial in this game. Just supplying the width. Felt like she could attack that with her head. Instead, makes good contact in the end with her feet regardless, or her foot regardless. Just unlucky from the winger. Ricochets that one off the post, but right idea to find her on that far side. And Olsen may be one of those players that, that doesn't get talked about enough in this high scoring attack for Florida State. Six goals, seven assists this season. Well, the 29th annual Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden coming your way again this year tomorrow night on ESPN and at number 11 FAU against number 20 Illinois at 6.30 Eastern. Then number nine North Carolina squaring off against number five UConn. Always a great night for a great cause to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation. Go to V.org. Scoreless so far in this national championship matchup from Cary, North Carolina. Or do you give, let's see what happens here with Huff, but I'm wondering if there's a slight edge you'd give thus far to either team. Foul here against Florida State. Yeah, I think we would expect this in this game, knowing when we talked to Paul Ratcliffe on how dangerous this Florida State attack is. They get numbers forward. There's really good rotations. We're already seeing Echigini at times on this near side. Huff pulling out. So it's difficult to manage defensively. But we do know Stanford has been in these positions before. Sitting back, being patient, staying compact. That back four is intact. So I feel like it's, it's fairly even at this point in time, 20 minutes into this game. Brown, picking it up right about midfield for Florida State. And to our point, Jen, you can hear Paul Ratcliffe on this, this near side just saying, don't run all over the place, stay compact, and make sure you stay tight between your lines. Good defense, and Harvey does well to work back, just poke, poke that away from Jordan Dudley right there in the middle of the field. She's likely seen that Jordan Dudley turn and the damage it can do quite quickly. Good step in there. There's Harvey again on the ball, the freshman midfielder for the Cardinal. And this is the moment where Stanford is asking for more patience from their players, keeping the ball because you can just see the suffocating pressure right now that Florida State is putting on the Stanford side. And they're actually asking in their defensive posture, let the Florida State center backs come to them. Make sure that we're not running around unnecessarily because we know that it's going to be a high tempo game when we do have the ball in the attack. Chance now, Marion, for Stanford to get into the attack. Dom's furious in the middle, was calling for it, had space. She flares outside now, gets it from Montoya. Doms, national champion her freshman year, looking for a second title. 
In her fifth year with the Cardinal, the shot will not challenge Christina Roque. Well, that entire play starts with switch switching the point of play for Mikey. Great awareness. That opens up the space on this near side. And exactly who you want orchestrating the attack. Doms just pulls herself wide, sends that one in. And this is where Florida State can be vulnerable. When you have the majority of the possession, you're pushing numbers forward. You haven't had to defend much throughout this first 20, 25 minutes. And then you get numbers forward for Stanford. Can they take their chances? Not a bad idea. Just misses by a bit over the crossbar for Mikey. How do you feel the decision making has been from a Florida State standpoint? Mary, you just talked about for Stanford being patient, letting these center backs pass it. But when Florida State decides to go, when they decide to break, how has that been so far? Well, they're going to have to be, and I, I said it moments ago, committed to keeping the width, staying wide at times. And we just saw Huff in the middle of the field orchestrating, telling Etchigini to stay a bit higher, see if you can pull out that back line or this defense for Stanford horizontally. That's what opens up these gaps that we're seeing Brown try to get into right now. Brown gets an overlapping run from EY. The cross in front of the goal. Doms defending against Olsen. Laura, you said it. You just saw Taylor Huff infuriated, telling her team, get wide, please stay wide. She's actually made the run out wide herself multiple times, understanding how important Witt is going to be in this game. Just one shot so far for the nation's number one offense in Florida State. But as dominant as some of the numbers look, really for both of these teams coming in, in terms of being unbeaten, number of goals Florida State has scored. Eli does keep this in. They've been challenged, or they've had a number of matches Florida State where it took some time to find that first goal, or even they had to come from behind a few times on the season. Well, because they're facing teams like this, and Stanford's done a, such a good job. They are organized. There's good communication. We saw that in the semifinal against BYU as well with the amount of numbers that they send forward. But these are the types of defenses that they face. There's not a ton of room. So it demands proper decision making. It demands patience when you're on the ball. And then finding your moments when you can go 1v1 or do you have to go in combination. But they have to find those moments when they're going to slow things down, but also speed up the play to try to catch out Stanford. Because this is what Stanford will look for all night long. And with Dom's on the ball dictating the tempo, they can cause problems whether they've had the ball majority of the game or not at all. Wesley fouled by Dudley. I think the coaching staff for Stanford is, is arguing and making the command that that is the third or fourth time that Wesley's been taken out from Dudley. Should be a yellow card. Gets away with one. Maybe feel like she gets a a little leeway for the amount of tackles that she takes on that front line for Florida State. Christina Roque in goal, 16 career shutouts in NCAA tournament play in her career. The senior number one all time in that category in the Florida State record books. seen hardly any attack come up this near side of the field for Florida State when they have found with Lori it seems like it has almost always been on that far side. Well that's not completely unusual because we do see EY a lot of the time get higher up the field one of the reasons why she has eight assists on the season from that right back position for Florida State so she's more of a natural player that's going to get higher up the field than Zanton on this near side as the left back will pick her moments more often but when EY does go, Vincent will just tuck in, create a three back. And Lori, a little bit more on the positioning of Florida State and where they actually feel like they're not doing a good enough job in the buildup is Leilani Nesbeth. We've hardly seen her touch the ball. And the ask is actually for her to start playing behind that two front line of confrontation. Dicey moment there, Marion, but Gilchrist able to hold off the pressure of Stanford. Yeah, we really have not 
Harold Nesbitt name much, and that is to Stanford's credit. Florida State certainly would like their leader in the midfield more involved. Stanford crowd making themselves heard here in Cary, North Carolina. Flynn, perhaps hoping to find one of those moments as Van Zandt on it now. You just talked about Lori for the freshman to get into the attack, and here is Nesbitt taking it off the foot of Kitahata. Driven ball just at the top of the area. Dudley is tripped up. Penalty kick on the way for Florida State. Well, we were just talking about the importance of Nesbeth in the buildup, but this is what she does so well. She's the one that wins this ball back, plays it out wide. That allows for this entire play to develop, and then just so intelligent from this young freshman, Dudley. Takes a touch. A lot of players would try to take that first time. Bates the defender, draws the foul. Penalty kick for Florida State. Seminole is a perfect five for five from the spot on the season. Stanford has yet to concede a penalty kick. They've only faced one, and it did not go in. Dudley herself, one for one on the season. Dudley to give four to save the lead. She got it. Yay! Florida State. We said it throughout the tournament that goals change the complexity of these games, and that is exactly what it has done right here. It's Nesbeth that wins this great interception. She starts the attack, then they can go quickly. There's the width that we've been calling for from Florida State. It allows the time and space for Dudley. She draws the foul, steps up, makes no mistake about it, says thank you very much. One of the reasons why not only am I a freshman, one of the best players in college soccer this season is this exact reason. Draws the foul, steps up, top corner, 1-0 Florida State. Florida State so composed. Number 11, Jordan but Dudley. we were just talking about the positioning of Nesbeth in terms of the buildup. I think she's actually spot on with staying out of the play, allowing Flynn Gilcrest. Here comes Jody Brown of Florida State again. Yeah. Well, what's the best time to score a goal? Right after you scored the first one, and here it is. How quickly Florida State can get into the attack. One big ball over the top. Brown starts it, she gets it back. And my goodness, what a finish. Not easy, it's bouncing, it's at pace, but look at that first touch. And then the second one in the back of the net. Fantastic first touch from Brown to set herself up. Still had work to do. Top corner, 2-0, Florida State, just like that. Well, guys, if I thought that the reaction for when they called that penalty kick was electric from the Florida State bench, I was just proven wrong by that <laughs> second goal. And I will tell you what happened after the second goal. Jody Brown made it a point to walk slowly past every single one of the Stanford players and eyed them all, <laughs> knowing that this is their field and this is a place where they are used to winning. Oh, a little personality coming out from the reggae girl from Jamaica who is finding her rhythm for Florida State, Marion. Jody Brown, maybe a little bit of a quieter year this year for Florida State with the explosion of goals from Echigini on the ball now and Dudley. But what she has just done with these two goals, 26 seconds apart for the first time, in 36 matches, the Stanford defense has conceded more than one goal in a game. It's an incredible streak, one of which this defense was very proud of. And now they find themselves in a very unfamiliar position of having to chase two goals down. Well, and it's one of the reasons why they have been so good Florida State is because they have a variety of players that are contributing. We talk about Olsen that sets up the deadly penalty kick. She stays wide. The understanding of where the space is. Nesbeth doing her part, stepping up, intercepting the ball. And then immediately after going ahead, 
quickly do they catch them on the counter attack in and behind. Brown's the one that starts it, she gets it back. Top corner, and my goodness, so many threats. It's so difficult, and we heard Brian Pinsky say coming in to this semifinal match saying, it's one thing to keep us at bay for 45. It is another to do it for 90 minutes. Just so many threats, a variety of ways they can tag, and so lethal in front of goal for Florida State. And there is that incredible streak we were just talking about. I mean, that is so impressive for this defense. And now you wonder, too, how much this changes your game plan. Paul Ratcliffe admitted their game plan changed on Friday night in the semifinal when they got two goals early. They were allowed to be more defensive the rest of that game. Now, it looks like it's going the other way. Will Ike be involved in this attack? You know she wants to be one of the leaders, a leading scorer for this Stanford team on the season. Trying to get a leg to it here. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Ryan Campbell, it goes. And she regroup. One word that this Stanford team told us they felt represented them this season when we spoke with them on Thursday was resilient. Well, they're going to have to find that and dig deep here against Florida State. Harvey. Feel and sense more numbers around the ball for Stanford, but I'm unable to keep the possession. No immediate pressure on Roque. See Lauren Flynn pointing out in front of her, just directing where she wants her teammates to go. And now eventually Ike will come up just to try to break up this passing game to the center back to the goalkeeper, Gilchrist. Olsen. Chagini to Dudley. Brown. Jordan Dudley scoring her 14th goal of the season from the penalty spot. That broke open the scoring 26 seconds later. Jody Brown added another one for Florida State. And after having just one shot in the first 28 minutes, two shots, two goals in the 29th. Well, and the difference once they got those two goals was just the pace at which they were playing. Prior to that, too slow trying to play, build out of the back and allow for Stanford to be able to move side to side defensively. It's going to always be difficult to break a team down that's this good defensively with that pace. But once they are able to win the ball, play a bit quicker, one and two touch passes, get the ball into the box, that's exactly what happened is the two goals back to back for Florida State. Trio of players off the bench, including Caitlin Zappé, who's one of the heroes in that semifinal win, had the game winner against the Clemson Tigers, scoring the first goal in the 38th minute of that match. Via Pace, Maria Alagoa, the other two off the bench for the Seminoles. This is what I'm talking about in terms of just the pace at which they're playing. Much wider from the two center backs, forcing Ike to have to pick her moments, who she's going to lock onto defensively. But can they push the pace a bit more? Because 10 minutes left to go in this first half. You want to look to see if you can get that third goal to really put this game out of reach. Because if Stanford gets one back, that changes the complexion, just like goals do, of this game, cutting the lead in half. Nesbitt gets onto it, rips the shot. 
Tonight, our Week 13 Monday Night Football matchup features Trevor Lawrence and the AFC South leading Jaguars hosting Jamar Chase and a desperate Bengals team looking to snap a three-game losing streak. That is at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes with Peyton and Eli once again over on ESPN 2. Sophia Wynn, Olivia Garcia, both on for Florida State. And Lumi Kostmeyer has come on the field for Stanford. There is some pressure. Florida State is taking it to that Stanford back line. Hop into the box. Keeps her feet, keeps the ball. That's back toward the goal. Looked like the ball got out of bounds, it did. Taylor Huff, Onia Tugini both credited with assists on that Jody Brown goal. And a little miscommunication there between Mimi Van Zandt and Olivia Garcia who just came on. Coverage of NCAA championships continues with the men's college cup semifinals on Friday, December 8th at 6 p.m. And then 45 minutes following the conclusion of the first semifinal, we get the second on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA men's college cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. Florida State still hunting for that third goal you just talked about, Lori. But can Stanford break out? Katherine Paulson just came into the match. One of the changes of placing Ellie Montoya in the attack, but Lauren Flynn having none of it. Well, in the, the fresh legs, Kosmeyer has to be the outlet. Hold up that play, just comes on as a substitute, trying to break free, allow for players to join into the attack has to post up better because now we're going to see Florida State attack with numbers. Out to the right it goes. Sophia Wynn will put it in front of the goal. Ryan Campbell has it. Ryan Campbell taking over in goal for the Stanford Cardinal. It's her second straight year as a starter and now she can't help but think back to the last time Stanford was playing for a national championship in 2019 one of the heroes in that match was goalkeeper Katie Meyer and her tragic passing in 2022 is something that this team still feels very much that they are still working through and we'll tell you a lot more about that at halftime Roque, third team All-American this season for Christina Roque. And we do have a player down for Stanford, it's Lumi Kostmeyer. Sophomore, frequent contributor off the bench, but he's gonna need to come off here, just having trouble even putting much weight on that right leg. Number 33, Lumi Kostmeyer. So that'll bring Marin Wool, freshman out of San Diego. Well, I would ask you, Lori, is if just looking the way Stanford is set up here, there is just the one player up high to challenge the two center backs, the goalkeeper of Florida State. Do they? Stanford need to bring maybe more bodies higher and start a press higher up. Are they going to be content to still start their press closer to midfield? Yeah, well, the challenge is, is the threats that Florida State have in behind. So you don't want to expose yourself too much by pressing higher, getting more numbers forward, because then they get footballs over the top. They'll beat you in the foot race in behind. So it's about picking your moments. And, and that goes back to my point before we saw 
Kosmeyer come off injured. She's a substitute, fresh legs. Whoever's playing that center forward position has to be the outlet, hold up the ball against those two center backs for Florida State because once it is one, can they bounce the ball off of her and then allow for more to join in underneath? Florida State with Zipay in the box. Stopped at the near post by Campbell. Well, she's certainly playing with a ton of confidence and rightfully so after taking that first goal, the game winner in the semifinal off the Hoff Valley, no, Hoff no, Valley, no, excuse no, me. No, just trying to wiggle her way, takes a good first touch to set herself up, earns a corner kick. Fourth of the match in this first half for Florida State. Driven toward the near post, Nesbeth flicked it through. Is there a follow up to be had for Florida State? Stanford not out of danger yet. will reset. Under five minutes to play in this first half. A match that was broken open in a matter of 26 seconds for the Seminoles. A penalty kick quickly followed by a Jody Brown goal. Both of those coming in the 29th minute. And that's a great ball. This is where Nesbeth it can cause so much trouble. Just getting in behind that first line of pressure for Stanford and then get faced up and play make from those areas. Great positioning from the number six, Nesbeth for Florida State. Strong leadership on this Florida State team. One thing that Brian Penske learned very quickly when he took over a couple of years ago, last year his first season and he talked about when he was getting to know this team and the players that first spring that he took over. He understood that this is a group that understood the legacy they already had at Florida State and that they were intent upon continuing. And his leaders, like Nesbitt, so crucial to what this team has been able to continue to do in this season. Huff looking for Nesbitt, corner of the box. Offside flag comes up. Um, this is right now where Stanford needs to be smart. Can they push to see if they can get one more attack with just under three minutes left to go in this first half? But just make sure that they're touch tight defensively, organized, good communication, don't concede another goal before the break, and then be able to, to regroup because right now it does feel like at times they're just hanging on defensively as this game is starting to speed up a bit for Florida State, getting more of the positioning and possession higher up the field. Nesbeth left in a pocket of space right near the logo at midfield. Huff is tripped up. This will be a free kick for Florida State. Well, you asked me, Jen, just moments ago about the structure defensively for Stanford, do they need to step up? And right now they're getting caught in between two minds. This is why Nesbeth is able to play this ball, get beyond that first line of pressure and then find Huff. She draws the foul and good opportunity. Could be a bit too far to beat Campbell off the initial ball, but can they at least test her, force a rebound, get runners into the six yard box? Lani Nesbitt playing like she's got that look in her eye though. She's coming at you. She is looking to set up her teammates. But she could use them too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we we're singing a different tune to the lyrics she had laid out. <laughs> Even Penske having to smile over on the sideline. Not exactly how that one was drawn up. But my, oh my, what a challenge for Paul Ratcliffe and Stanford. Trailing Florida State by two goals. Neither of these teams have tasted defeat all season long. One but only one can finish a champion. The Seminoles in control with that two goal lead. Yeah. 
to believe this Stanford team, with their body of work, will find a way to find a moment at least. Can they take advantage of it in this match? Perhaps something going now. Ike sees it, a run for Paulson. Flynn on top of it for Florida State, just sees it out of bounds. Pretty dominant first half. Accentuated by two goals in 26 seconds as Florida State leads it to nothing. And look at that number. That's what Stanford is up against. Florida State unbeaten her last 160 matches when leading at the half. Well, let's see what Brian Penske thinks of this first half. He is with Marion. Coach, you have two goals, but your center backs have been electric. What did you ask of them coming into this game? Uh, to play together, right? We are a better team when those two play together and sometimes involve Roque and then ideally moving the forward a little bit. And they're kind of pressing with one, sometimes with two, but the more our center backs touch the ball, the better soccer team we are. Earlier in the game, you were asking Leilani to deepen her position. How did her positioning evolve in this first half? Yeah, I mean, there were times where she could have gotten in between that front two or in behind that front two, right? But then I, we've been trying to get her to comfortable popping off, right, and almost getting in line with the two center backs, right? So whatever she feels, we got to find pockets. They're starting to press Gilly a little bit more. They weren't initially, but the more lays on the ball for us, it's pretty good. Thank you, Coach Gluck. Jim, back to you. Some of the images of this NCAA Women's College Cup final captured here. What a beautiful sight as we got going. Here in Cary, North Carolina, Stanford and Florida State, two unbeaten teams facing off in the national championship for the first time ever in the history of this event. But it is Florida State with the lead after the first 45 minutes, two nothing the score, a big challenge for Stanford to hear how the Cardinal will try to get back in this one. Let's hear from Paul Ratcliffe, he's with Marion. Paul, how does your defensive posture, if at all, change in the second half? Yeah, we have to open up a little bit and get forward. We were kind of staying together as a group, and now the game's going to open up, um, which is difficult because Florida State has some outstanding attacking players. You moved Ike into a little bit of a deeper position. What can we see from her in the second half? What's her role here? Yeah, we're going to move her back up front a little bit here. Um, so we're trying some new things tactically, but we have to put more pressure on their center backs. They do a good job of spacing out, but we need to apply more pressure, which will open up the game a little bit. Um, so we'll see how it works out. Thank you, Paul. Good luck. Uh, thank you. Jen? Such a, it's a conundrum, isn't it, Lori, to try to figure out how aggressive you'll be how out of your comfort zone you go because both of these teams have been so stingy defensively, particularly in the second half. And Stanford's going to have to try to find a way to break down this Florida State team. And for Florida State, well, the offense doesn't just get going as the game goes along. It really picks up pace in the second half. Seminoles have scored nearly as many goals in the second 45 minutes as the Cardinal have scored on the entire season. Same starters out for both teams that started the match. Stanford in black, Florida State in white. Your two goal scorers for the Seminoles, Jordan Dudley and Jody Brown. Olsen. Dom's calling for it, gets it. One of the captain's fifth-year players in the middle of the field for this Stanford team. And the book and her career with national championships. 1-1 as a freshman in 2019. She and Wesley both. And look at Ejigini working to try to keep the ball for Florida State and win it back. Well, and just going back to Dom's for Stanford in the center part of the field, she's going to be so important linking the lines defense to offense just getting on the ball as much as possible because as we said coming into this game she's the one that has to dictate the tempo on when they're going to go quickly can they catch out florida state when they do push numbers forward but then at times can they just retain possession through doms and then build with numbers Dom 
defense has certainly carried this Cardinal team throughout the season. Can they find the offense that is needed to get back into this match? Just five total shots in the College Cup. It was a season low three shots in Friday's semifinal against BYU, but hey, they were pretty efficient. All three of them went on target and two of them wound up in the back of the net. Echeguini needs a moment here after taking some contact. And Brian Kensky trying to get a look at exactly what is happening as Echeguini will have to come to the side and get looked at. Contact issue perhaps. Something in the eye. So at the moment, Florida State with 10 players on the field with Echeguini off to the side, but play is halted. Now the whistle is blown to put the ball back in play. Actually took a bit longer than I think it probably should have. Echeguini still on the side. EY up to Brown. Jody Brown playing with a lot of confidence. 4-4 to State. Yeah, she certainly is up for it and gets that second goal. Clean touches, good positioning, good movement. Talked about her and Huff coming out of the midfield, those runs that they can make, and that's what led to that second goal. Such quick succession, 4-4 to State in the first half. Big reason why she starts the ball. She started that play and then finished it off with the second goal. Didn't take long for you to probably pick up that Echeguini back on the field for Florida State. So they are back up to full strength. Maybe Van Zanten finds Huff. At the moment had dropped in a little deeper as Lauren Flynn had stepped a little higher in the midfield. Elise Evans, a sophomore, born and bred to be a Stanford Cardinal, born at Stanford Hospital. Her parents, both former Stanford student athletes, her mom, an NCAA champion as a cross country coach at Stanford, and also part of the women's soccer's first ever College Cup team back in 1993. Kita Hara, gonna make something happen. Ike, that's who you wanna find if you're a Stanford. As an assist in every NCAA tournament game so far this season, Ike. Joel Jung, though, couldn't initially hang on to it. Doms will try to reset for the Cardinal. Well, and that's more promising from Stanford. Just to keep the ball moving, allow for more play players to get higher up the field. Try to create in this attack. Montoya. Shane Harvey working the far side. Have to keep it going for Montoya. That's a tough challenge up and over Jordan Dudley. Well, and one I feel like Wesley feels like she has to make just to allow her presence be known to Dudley. But we might have to show what could be the best assist of the game so far. Look at Penske putting on the glasses finding the <laughs> contact to get Joe Echeguini back on the field. <laughs> I just got to give a little credit where credit is due. Jerry Brown. Played on the World Cup stage this past summer for Jamaica. Her second World Cup with the Reggae Girls. Bonnie Brandt. Ike. And the Florida State defense keep her contained the 12 midfielder of the year. Montoya loses the battle one on one against Van Zanten. Oh, 
one. I think this is the challenge for Florida State is to make sure they don't take their foot off the gas. They continue to connect passes, be disciplined defensively, meaning can they win the ball higher up the field? Because right now, this allows Ike into the box. A chance for Stanford. Bouquet is out. The Cardinal, Doms, has the shot. Yeah. point the exact point I was trying to make is if this Florida State team takes their foot off the gas this Stanford team is not going to let up. I felt like Ivy could have taken her chance there but then it allows for Doms to come up. She's not going to miss from that that positioning great first touch to set herself up right there buy herself some time just tucks it into the corner. Roque is screened in the end gets a little bit of a fingertip can't keep it out of the back of the net and we said Stanford have to get the next goal to be able to cut this lead in half, make it a game, and that's exactly what it is. Game on here in Cary, North Carolina. Picture perfect placement from Maya Doms to get that pass, Christina Roque, and this Florida State defense, which has just now conceded their first goal of this NCAA tournament. And let's see how this changes things. Well, and, and Jen, we've all coming. I mean, it's only been five, seven minutes in the second half, but just allowing Stanford to get a bit of a foothold in this game, work their way into the attack, connect some passes more than we saw in the entire 45 minutes of the first half. That alone allowed them to get some confidence and then break free two players that we said that need to get on the ball. Ike, Doms, well, those are the two players that started that attack, finished it. Now it's two to one with Stanford working their way into this game and now potentially making it a bit nervy for Florida State. Kitahara and Ike both credited with assists on that goal by Dom. So now Ike does have an assist in every NCAA tournament game this year. Impressive streak. Both coaches told us after the semifinals, goals change games. We anticipate it could certainly change in terms of momentum, confidence for Stanford, but how will Florida State react? Well, that is the response that they need to have is to get on back on the front foot, regain possession higher up the field, make Stanford uncomfortable defensively. That's what we saw in the first half. That's why it was difficult for Stanford to even work their way into the attack the first 45 minutes have to rinse and repeat, replicate that. And it's a good start with Dudley earning this corner kick right after conceding that goal. Jordan Dudley working a little bit of that magic. She has shown off all season long to earn this corner. First of the second half, fifth of the match for Florida State. And Dudley will be one of the key targets for Florida State as Huff drives this ball across. Stays in play, gives her a chance to serve it again. Echigini, tough volley, a little too high. Well, it may be going to be difficult because Huff gets a hold of this one, just rifles it across the penalty spot. Echigini trying her luck there in the end, doesn't miss by much, but it is rising, gets underneath it. But that's the aggressive attack that you want to see from Florida State. I remember that graphic that we showed you coming into the second half that both of these teams throughout the season have conceded just four goals in the second half of play. Whatever happens here will have to be well earned and the national championship on the line for these two programs who have proven to be so dominant, combining to win four of the last six NCAA championships. Florida State on the move with Huff. Brown left in some space. Jody Brown trying to get around the defender. But Avani Brand does her job. Three out, three 
Y. Olson. Christina Roque has not yet had to make a save in this match, but the one goal conceded in the 52nd minute by Maya Doms, making this a one goal game. Dudley making her way into the box, looking to set up the other side, save! Oh, what a save that is from Campbell. Coming up huge, because you felt like that was in the back of the net, and it all starts with Dudley, just rolls off her defender, gets faced up 1v1 on this near side, and then the rest is history here. She is 1v1, leaves Evans in the dust, slots it above the ball across the six yard box exactly where you want it, Number makes seven, it easy one, for her teammates. One, but Campbell seven, coming up huge with this save. Game changing save right there, makes herself big, just enough to see that one over the crossbar. Now she'll have to defend the corner, and she does. You in the first half said, Lori, that Florida State's got to do a bit of a better job of keeping those corners away from Campbell because she has proven to be very aggressive in defending her area. And where Stanford actually wanted to win that ball was the entry pass into Taylor Huff. Lori, you mentioned a great run by Dudley rolling out to the width, but they felt like that was way too easy for Taylor Huff to make that little one-touch pass to her. Well, and that's one of the reasons why Huff has been such a good addition as we're going to see Stanford build into this attack. On the turnover, can the Cardinal take advantage? Echeghini coming back to help defensively. Dudley, maybe a little tug on Evans. Nothing is called initially. But just going back to that point, Jenna and Marianne Huss positioning is excellent because she's staying higher up initially on the back line. That's forcing Doms or even Harvey at times to drop back further. Then she pops off at the right moments, able to flick that ball on first time to Dudley. But it's that higher positioning initially to stay out of the build, then to be able to have the space underneath to come into, allows her to take that one-time touch and develop into the attack. Maya Doms making a difference in this game for Stanford. And I mean, she's the player you picked out for a reason, Lori, when we were looking at the lineups coming into this match. Well, we picked her out in the semifinal game. We picked her out in the final game because she is their leader. She is their engine in the midfield. We see what she can do on both sides of the ball defensively in good positions to be able to affect the play and not allow Florida State to gain any momentum, but then also what she can do in the attack. Watch out here. Olsen off the ball from Dudley. Olsen! Florida State retakes the two-goal lead. Goal! Florida State. And this is exactly what Paul Ratcliffe was saying. They're going to have to come out of their defensive posture, Stanford, to chase this game. Well, what does that do? It opens up the space in behind. And what a first time ball that is from Dudley to understand where the space is. But then look at that touch from Olsen. It sets her up perfectly, cuts off the angle for Wesley to be able to make the play defensively. And then this player right here, who's typically a center forward for Florida State, been moved out wide right. Well, from this position, she is not gonna miss. So clinical, just slots it to the far post, gives a little bit of separation in this game. Three to one, Florida State regaining the lead, regaining the momentum. Six minutes, the response from Florida State after that initial goal from Stanford. But how about that first touch from Olsen? Just understands where the pressure's coming defensively. Just enough to be able to cut off the angle, be able to give her a better angle as well to be able to finish that off, that opportunity off. And my goodness, just tucks it into the far post. And what an important goal that was, her seventh of the season. And I mentioned that position because this is a player throughout her career has played the number nine, the center forward position for Florida State. Well, they wanted to move Dudley. It felt like she was more effective in that center forward role. So they moved Olsen out wide right. She's been effective there as well, playing in balls, creating width for Florida State. But when she gets into those central areas, 
that is where she's most, most lethal. We saw it just there on that opportunity in that third goal for Florida State. Pretty unselfish, be able to make a move like that. Now Stanford coming back down the other way. Harvey, one touch, gets past Ike in the middle. Oh, and these next five minutes are so crucial for Florida State because we saw them come out uncharacteristically of their team, pick their foot off the gas, allow for Stanford to get back into this game. Now they have to continue to push the pace, not allow for Stanford to get another goal in this game and, and really put it out of reach. Nesbitt comes in to take it off the foot of Ike. Evans. Buda. Cardinal finding some width with Montoya. Montoya's cross at the near post, caught by Roque. And I think this is the difference that we're going to see for Stanford trying to build, whether it's Evans or Wesley at times, coming out from that center back position, trying to create a numbers up or a numerical advantage centrally then to be able to open up Dom so she can get in a position to either turn her own on her own or combine as we just saw her do, find that wide player Montoya and then they can take on 1v1. Huff. Van Zanten along with Dudley credited with the assist on that Olsen goal in the 58th minute. Here is Olsen. Finding some room to move, has Brown, that's where she goes, Brown! Give her another! Florida State on fire in the national championship! Florida State. Well, once this game opens up, it's always going to be difficult for the opposition of Florida State to be able to defend. Once there's time and space for these front runners, the attacking five for Florida State, it's always going to be so difficult to defend. You see Olsen with the presence of mind. First touch, takes the space, right pass, right weight of the pass into Brown. And there's some question marks for the goalkeeping of, of Campbell. She anticipates to go one way. And then much like we saw in that first goal for Brown in the first half, puts it the other way of Campbell. There's a the dive from Campbell. Brown goes the other way. Her second of the night, fourth for Florida State. And it's gonna be a big challenge now for Stanford to come back from this deficit. But what a team performance from this Florida State team and what a response after they conceded that early goal in the second 10, half. Jody Brown, assisted by number nine, Beato Olsa. The goal was scored in the 61st minute. Stanford Brown from nine Olsen in the 61st minute. Stanford substitution in the Jody Brown now the brace, Beato Olsen a goal and an assist. Julia Leontini. Florida State attack, number one in the nation for a reason. And of all the Florida State teams that have helped to contribute to the legacy that has been building in Tallahassee, where might this one rank? Pretty close to the top, four goals. The most that the Seminoles have ever scored in a College Cup game. And that is one of the things we were able to talk to the players about coming into the semifinal games last Thursday is just the standards that they have for this team, regardless of who's playing, the attack that they want, the, the determination. And one of the things that they said is TBD, talent, determination, belief. I was I hoping you remember that, that acronym. <laughs> I don't actually think that was in the right order either. <laughs> regardless, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of time talent there's a lot of belief there's a lot of determination in the standards throughout the years regardless after Pinsky taking over they kept those high they've added a little bit of nuance to their game some direct play 
always a possession-oriented team, but it's made it even more difficult for them or the opposition to play against them. Stanford, he gets something going in their attack. Erica Grillion, freshman in off the bench, Doms. Scored in the last three matches now for Stanford. Had the game winner in the quarterfinal against Nebraska. Had a goal in the fourth minute of the semifinal against BYU. And then gave Stanford some hope in the 52nd minute here tonight before Florida State piled on a couple more. Good step in to win the ball for the Cardinal. Equally as good defensively by Gilchrist for Florida State. Dudley posting up. Has Evans on her back. That center back pairing so good. Evans and Wesley and then a push in the back from Dudley. It's been cautioned a couple of times. Has not been booked but has had a referee that we're talking to a couple of times already for some contact. One who's been a, a fun battle between those two of Wesley, who's been such a good leader, stalwart on that back line for Stanford defensively, and the young freshman Dudley. Those two really battling 1v1 this entire match. And see the argument that Stanford has is just that late tackle, a late push on the back of Wesley that draws this foul. And a set piece helps Stanford. Get back into this match. Seminoles with a chance to break free. Huff has Olsen in front of her, and then Olsen, and too much zigzagging, took herself out. But here comes Etchigini. That is Florida State. One threat after another. Brown, Nesbitt. Pass up the middle block, so off the wings it goes in Olsen. The 29th annual Jimmy V Classic is coming your way from Madison Square Garden again this year. Tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app number 11 FAU taking on number 20 Illinois. That's at 6.30 Eastern. Then, number nine, North Carolina squaring off against fifth-ranked UConn. Always a great night for a great cause, and to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation, go to v.org. A well-deserved round of applause there as Jody Brown comes off. We have pace on in her place for Florida State. Trio of substitutions again off the bench, as we saw in the first half. Caitlin Zappé, Leah Pace, and Maria Alagoa. Such a tough task for this Stanford team. And it is a very young team. Mentioned that off the top with seven underclassmen in the starting lineup, including IG, just a sophomore this year. So the future certainly bright for this Stanford team, but players like Maya Doms, Kennedy Wesley, it's their last go around, fifth year for Doms, graduate year for Wesley. And they certainly came here with visions of taking home that trophy for a second time in their careers. Paul Ratcliffe down here telling the newest subs to come in that he just needs some fire from them. But one important note on the Stanford subs available, number 33 who we saw go down in that first half, Lumi Kostmeyer, she is out for the remainder of the game. She is dressed on the sideline, but we will not see her return to this match. Thank you, Marion. Yeah, just one less weapon at Paul Ratcliffe's disposal. Naya Harrison has come into the match for Stanford. 
replacing Avani Brandt. Ball bounced up for handball, so Stanford will take it over. Dobbs. Two captains connecting. away from Grillion out of bounds. Unfamiliar territory for sure. We talked about that incredible stretch for Stanford, 36 in a row, not allowing more than one goal. The last time they allowed four to go all the way back to 2005. Well, I think that says more about the, the special qualities, how special this Florida State team is, more so than it says defensively about Stanford because the Stanford team, as we've mentioned several times, how good, and that's gonna be, thought it was gonna be a foul on Wesley, but no, continue to play on, says Megan Mullen, but this is such a special Florida State team and the amount of threats that they've had, or they have, and the variety of ways that these players can score goals, whether it's from distance, taking on 1v1, you occupy Dudley, she has two players around her. Well, that opens up space for Echigini Brown to come through. You have Huff, who's a transfer from Tennessee. She has 13 assists on the season, so you have players that are playing the, the through ball. They're linking play centrally, playing the balls wide. I mean, it is coming at you at every angle, and it's difficult to defend, as we've seen all of the opposition show yeah. against Florida State this year. of NCAA championships continues with the men's college cup semifinals Friday December 8th coming away from Louisville that starts at 6 p.m. over well, right here on ESPNU and for more information on the NCAA men's college cup log on to NCAA.com the official home for all 90 NCAA championships there you see your four teams will be facing off on the men's side for the national title which will be handed out next Monday on ESPNU Two ACC teams in the mix. This is what you're looking at, a future ACC matchup with Stanford coming over to the ACC. <laughs> Olivia Garcia, Sophia Wynn, both back into the match for Florida State. Catherine Paulson, Marin Wolf on for Stanford. Thinking about that streak too for Stanford, how far you had to go back, 2005, the last time they conceded four. When we talked to Paul Radcliffe, I asked him about what really makes a great program, a, a dynasty if you want to go there. And one of the first words he used was consistency. So you consistently have to be getting to these games, playing for these championships, giving your team a chance, whichever team were to win tonight pick up their fourth national championship. That'll be second of any program in the country behind North Carolina. And we saw one of the other things is, well, you are consistently putting players to the next level, the U.S. national team or other international teams playing professionally. We saw all the U.S. players giving a shout out, those who are Florida State and Stanford alums. Yeah, seven to be exact, always fun to see these players move on to the highest level. In case in point to your, what you're saying, Jen, just how good and how consistent both of these programs have been through the years. Especially in recent years with Florida State, they've just been on this stage so much. Stanford, 
Need some help with some numbers. That's a good ball to escape where the defense had collided, but not quite enough to keep the attack going. Still will be a throw in. Pace, a transfer from Pitt. Experience she has had joining this juggernaut of a Seminole team this season. Made quite an impact too, Leah Pace. Clarkson coming off the bench, but a lot of great contributions this season. Two goals, eight assists, three assists in the tournament. Stanford, perhaps a chance to get one here! Too high! Yeah, and, and you could just see the reaction. Dom's immediately Puts her, her head in her knees, knows that was the opportunity. It's a fantastic turn. And they're aggressive. And this is the one thing that we know about the Stanford team is they are not going to give up. Not a bad idea. Wolf takes it right off the turn. That one's always rising, as you can see Roque there trying to see it over the crossbar. But good opportunity, one of the better ones outside of the goal in this second half. And going to have to continue to look for those moments. Let's go, let's go. looking for opportunities trying to break down this Florida State team and when you think about success over the last few years these are some really incredible numbers by Florida State sixth time that they're the number one seed fourth straight college cup 10 of the last 13 that they have been here giving themselves an opportunity and making it to this championship game time in the last four seasons and this is the first goal that they conceded in this tournament yeah. this season. I mean, it has just been. <laughs> Wesley, I'm gonna work hard against Alagoa. Well, Wesley and Downs were the two players that we said for Stanford are gonna have to have big nights in. They have risen to the occasion. The two leaders on the back line in the midfield. Dom's getting the, the only goal for Stanford so far. And Wesley doing whatever she can just to make life a bit more miserable for those front runners of Florida State. Stanford forced into behind that pressure a little further up the field. Florida State still finding a way to break out of it. Huff got tripped up. Legs and feet tangled up there with Julia Leontini. Taylor Huff saying she was looking for something different, different type of competition. Spent a couple years at Tennessee. He's played for Brian Penske there. Came here to the ACC, came to Florida State. The goal of winning championships. She is helping to give her team a chance to do just that on this field tonight. Well, one of the reasons why she's been so important outside of obviously her skill set being a two-way midfielder, the, the amount of mileage she can cover in that central area. Is because when you think about two players that they lost, this Florida State team is Jenna Nyswanger, Kuda Robbins, who's gone on to play in the NWSL this season. Those are two big personalities, big losses, and leaders on your field. Well, she's helped fill that gap. And one of the reasons why they've been able to not only elevate their game for the state, but also step in and, and finish this season off. And Jenna Nicewanger, NWSL Rookie of the Year, just made her U.S. national team debut against China. Jody Brown having herself a night. How good is she right off 
of the kickoff. They regain possession. She starts it, gets in behind. That's where they can be most dangerous on the counter. And then this ball from Olsen just right into the pass of Brown to be able to, to finish it off a first time. Forces Campbell, a Stanford goalkeeper, to go one way, almost cheat too early. Then top corner for her second of the night. And that will be her sixth and seventh of the season coming out of the attacking midfield role for Brown. Brown, Dudley back on the field for Florida State. Montoya, Ike back for Stanford. This could be something for the Cardinal. Docs. Buda has it blocked. Ball headed down by Nesbeth. Staff. The Florida State Kudney staff just continues to echo one word, sometimes to themselves, sometimes to each other, and that word is relentless. Well, they don't want their team to let up, do they, Marion? Because Stanford is coming. High ball in the box, and Roquet dropped it. Did take some contact, it looked like, but did her job in the air. And she'll draw the foul, she stands her ground sees it the entire way and there is the contact that comes late and you see the amount of players for Florida State that get beyond and make sure they have coverage so that ball doesn't find its way into the back of the net but relentless to what Marion was saying on both sides of the ball and outside of those first five minutes of this second half where they conceded that goal to Stanford right where they have left off the opening whistle both sides of the ball showing why they have been so good. Forcing turnovers, creating opportunities into the attack, and you're going to see Nesbeth. She's been such a focal point in that midfield. Florida State the glue, essentially, for Florida State. Olsen, a goal and an assist tonight. Back into the match for Florida State. And it's good to see some goals scored in the national championship game. Most we've seen by one team since 2012. And thinking about Florida State's journey in their last two trips to the national championship game. They won one in penalties. They lost one in penalties. So pretty tight affairs, both of those for the Seminoles. But flexing their muscle tonight. It has just been an attack that has been relentless. As Marion just reported, the Seminole coaching staff is encouraging this team to continue to be. Finish this game out, clean that trophy to take home to Tallahassee. Space for Ike. Can't she take advantage? One of the most lethal goal scorers for Stanford this season. Lays it off. Comes out for Montoya. Ali Montoya to the end line. Now gets it through. Ike on the turn. It's blocked. Still there for Stanford. Ike picks it back up. She goes down just outside the area. Well, every time she picks up the ball, Ike, she looks dangerous. Good little... Deception when she's on the ball, clean touches. Stanford forcing the finish go one way, she's trying to go the other. And just continue to make the point, the commitment though behind the ball right now for Florida State to make sure they don't give the Stanford team any looks in these last 10 minutes. 10 minutes less than to determine a champion, Florida State. With the three goal lead, Jordan Dudley. And characteristically, Let's it get a little too far out in front of her. Dudley has had such a terrific freshman season, first team All-American season on the soccer field. She 
is from Alpharetta, Georgia, not too far away from where I live, actually, and one of her youth basketball coaches messaged me earlier today to let me know what a tremendous basketball player Jordan Dudley is, as well as maybe hoping to play both sports in college. So, Rick Wyckoff, if you are listening for State Women's Team, who knows, maybe you could recruit Dudley to come over and play. But one of the things that the coach told me was that Jordan Dudley could have gone and played in any number of high-level elite teams, but she was really loyal. She stuck with the same team basically throughout her youth career and throughout most of high school. And certainly the Seminoles hoping they can get a few more years out of Jordan Dudley. Even though I know you think she is a ready-made pro waiting to happen. Sunday, it's a basketball Hall of Fame women's showcase matchup. See how it's leading right into that basketball? Between number 11, Utah, number one, South Carolina, and Mohican Sun Arena at 2.30 Eastern. Then number 17, UConn hosting number 24, North Carolina at 4.30, followed by the WNBA Draft Lottery at 5. You can catch it all on ESPN and ESPN app. I saw South Carolina women's basketball in action, went over saw them play the Duke Blue Devils yesterday on one of our days off here in North Carolina. Boy, that team is good. <laughs> they have everything, much like this Florida State team. Well, Don Staley being at the helm. Virginia Cavalier. Okay, that's like where you're hear. going. All Philadelphia right. native, that's what I like <laughs> to hear. And she uh, has another formidable group again in Columbia, South Carolina. Jordan Dudley certainly hasn't stopped playing. Intensity switch still flipped on. Six and a half to go in this one. Taylor Huff back onto the field for Florida State. Olsen acrobatically keeping this in play for the Seminoles. Still in the box, and Jagini adds another! It's only fitting to see Echigini get herself on this scoreboard. The Florida State leading goal scorer, 15 on the season coming into the night. This is her 16th, and it just starts with the acrobatic play that you mentioned, but just regaining possession, putting Stanford under pressure, getting numbers around the box, Echigini keeping it alive, and just testing her luck a bit. Just a half chance, as you can see, the, the last ditch defending from Stanford keeps it alive, and then Echigini a little bit of a, a ricochet to find its way into the back of the net, testing her luck, as I mentioned, and that would be the fifth of the night for Florida State Seminoles, and, and what a night it has been. And, and we've talked so much about how dominant they have been. Well, tonight is no different. Just putting Stanford under so much pressure, pressure, can't keep it out of the back of the net, and my goodness. What a performance from this Florida State team. Garnet and gold feeling good tonight. And spreading the love, right? Because yeah. this is what we've consistently said, and you and I have called their, their games a number of times this season. And it's not surprising at all, but to be able to spread the love around, as we said, fitting for Echigini to get on the board. She does so much in the way of attracting attention and drawing attention to herself that opens up, frees up other players. Brown doing her part tonight, Olsen as well. I mean, the front five has just been so lethal in the way of scoring goals. Showcasing that when it matters most in this national championship game. And 
this incredible, impressive season for the Stanford Cardinal, not ending the way they had anticipated. Knew this was going to be a really stiff test against Florida State tonight. They'd have to be at their best, both defensively and maybe find a gear offensively that they have not had to find here lately. Too tall a task, especially after conceding those goals the first two of the match within 26 seconds of one another in the first half. Free kick coming here for Stanford. Take it. Cardinal will try again with the ball in the box. Everybody there to defend for Florida State. Stanford really with everybody up. Nia Harrison, the only player back right now. Kennedy Wesley. It's like she's got some blood coming from her face. She is down on the ground. Two forward to state players over next to her. Ooh. See Wesley there, bottom of your screen. Dudley catches her right there. Yeah, just swinging of the arm, trying to keep her balance. Both of these players and what a fun matchup this has been between these two players. That time, Dudley just getting the better of Wesley. As that back arm swings across her face, catches her with the blood streaming down. I'm not so sure she would use that word fun for what it's been like tonight. What a tough task. It's been fun for us to watch. But Wesley, just a top caliber defender, graduate student for Stanford, and Dudley. And talent she has been all season long. Here she is on the ball. Jordan Dudley has Olsen in the middle, calling for it. Dudley leads two defenders in a wait. And this will set Florida State up with the free kick with just over three minutes to go. Well, just watch the, the skill initially. Just sees off one defender, two defenders, a little flick over to give herself this time. And then it's so smart because she has Olsen. She has another teammate in the middle of the field, but sees the space herself and draws the foul. And now they can slow things down once again, allow for the clock to tick off and just see this game out. Prime example, though, of the threat of that young player, but also the threat that this Florida State team continues to have in the attack, and, and they've been pushing the pace all game long. How do I feel like Nesbitt wants to get in on it? <laughs> she does. She did. <laughs> field goal. She calls it for herself. <laughs> Please to the stands. Well, this is one Florida State team that is undefeated and is getting to play for a championship this season. Seminoles taking the most of that opportunity here tonight. And the crowd giving a little love to their players coming off, Nesbitt and Dudley. And you can't see it initially on the screen, but Dudley runs immediately to Nesbitt, gives her a big hug, knows what she means to this team. And my goodness, we can't overstate it because we talk so much about the front five for Florida State, but Nesbeth, she's the glue, the one that holds this team together, just screens the back line, makes it so difficult, the heart of the spine of this team. And, deserves to get a rest the last few minutes of this game. Wilson, three defenders around her. Gilchrist just pops it over the top. See Peyton North, a freshman out of Centennial, Colorado, has come into the match these final few minutes for Florida State. A little late making her debut this season as she was coming off an ACL injury last fall.
Brown. Olsen. There is no going to the corner for this Florida State team. The pedal is pushed firmly to the ground in terms of gas in the attack. Huff. Florida State just over a minute away from celebrating the program's fourth national championship. One minute. Norse, the freshman with the ball at her feet for Florida State. And wide. I did deflect out, so Florida State will get a corner kick in the dying seconds. Final countdown is on now for Florida State here in Cary, North Carolina. Seminole fans putting their hands in the air. And four is fine for Florida State as the Seminoles win their fourth national championship, beating the Stanford Cardinal tonight. Congratulations to Florida State, the 2023 Division I Women's Soccer National Champions.